So you're ready to try out NX Fitness, right? Uh, first of all, make sure you have the latest version. Right now it's 2.4.1 from the website. Make sure you downloaded both the client, uh, desktop client and the media server applications. For Windows, it's a single install package. For Ubuntu Linux, um, you've got different install packages you have to install via terminal commands. Today we're going to show you Windows 64-bit right, operating system on Windows 10. So that's what I'm doing right now. So really simple. Let's get into it, right? I'm going to be installing uh, version 2.5, which is a beta version. So to get started, you double click on the install package, you accept the fact that you're going to be changing something in Windows, and you click Next. All right? Accept our end user license agreement, nothing nefarious in there, legal protection stuff, right? Um, and when you get to this screen, you're going to select launch both server and client installers. Now the media server for NX Witness is responsible for going out, detecting cameras, uh, storing all the data for the, for the system, synchronizing data between different servers as the system grows, uh, managing traffic, doing a lot of complex stuff, right? It's the heart of the system, it's the brain of the system. The client allows users to connect to the system, to manage the system, view live and recorded video, search video, you know, do all the things you need to do as someone who's going to be using your video system uh, to recall events or capture events or, you know, change recording schedules, integrate third-party systems, all that good stuff. So go ahead and click Next um, and click Install. So it's going to begin um, by installing the media server. Right, you need the media server for a client to connect to. Right, so click next. Um, under system name, give your system name. Right, I'm gonna call mine Tony Demo because it's in my office and it's a demo. Right, for password. Now, you'll notice here under login we have a default login of admin. We're planning on changing that in the future, but for now, every single system out there has an admin user. It's the system owner. It's the person who first sets up the system. Um, so for your password, in this case, you, you want to choose something pretty secure. Um, me, I'm going to use um, a space ball type thing where I'm one two three four five six an idiot's luggage password and because I'm going to delete this later, right? So uh, under allow system to optimize camera settings, okay, what that means is our media server when it detects a compatible camera, it installs a profile on it. And it says, hey camera, give me your maximum resolution and your maximum frame rate um, so that we get a really nice high quality stream from it. Um, we also tell it, if you've got a secondary stream, send us seven frames per second at a much lower resolution. And then we use that stream to do motion detection and motion search, um, which I'll show you later. Um, so that's what that is, we highly recommend it. Um, otherwise, you, you could get some cameras that aren't behaving too properly. Um, underneath send anonymous usage and crash statistics to software developers, that's just, you know, that's the data that everybody connect, collects from their users. Uh, we want to know when certain things are happening in systems. Uh, we want to be able to um, proactively um, fix bugs. Uh, so maybe users don't even know they exist. This is very important to us, so please leave that checked if you have an, an internet connection. That will give us a lot of good data. Um, go ahead and click next and begin installation. The installation of the, <clears throat> the installation of the server is actually, you know, very lightweight. It's very quick. You can see it's done. How do I know it's done? Is that I can look down in my Windows taskbar, and I've got uh, my server running now. Um, don't do anything with it. Just look at it. It's pretty. And click finished. Go to next. So now you're going to begin the client installation for Windows, right? Go ahead and click next. Um, if you want to place a shortcut on your desktop, you can. Me, I, as you can see from my desktop, I really don't like shortcuts, so I'm going to click Next. And then begin Install. And this is just going to take a couple seconds, right? Again, lightweight, fast. That's what we're all about because we're moving lots and lots of video. we got to be good at other things as well. Um, go ahead and click Launch NX Witness when Setup Exits. And click Finish, and you can close out the other one. Um, you can see this is a beta version. Um, but it's, it's going to be exactly the same as you guys are going to be using our 241. Um, our 25 version comes out into February, just so you know. Um, okay, so when you go to your client the first time, um, what you'll get is this pop up screen. It'll ask you to log in or connect to a server, right? Now remember, you just installed the media server on your machine. So you need to connect to that media server in order to view video being generated by it, right? And start interacting with the system. Um, so a couple different ways you can do that. One is you can use your uh, last used connections or auto-discovered servers. As you can see, I've got some auto different uh, 
systems out there, right? We're in, we're in our Burbank headquarters, so we got quite a few running for testing and all sorts of other stuff, right? Um, but in this case, I just set up Tony Demo, so I'm gonna choose Tony Demo. Uh, another way to do it is you can connect, if you set up port forwarding so you can access your system remotely, you could use a, a, a URL, like our demo system that we have on the, on the website. Um, or you can use an IP address if you know the IP address of your server. So I just connected to Tony Demo. I put in my idiot's password and I press the test connection button um, to make sure that the server is ready and accessible. And it is. So now I press connect. When I press connect, um, you're going to see on the left hand side of the client, we have our resource panel. This shows all the devices in the system, the media servers that are running in the system. Um, it shows what users are in the system. Um, if there's any local files uh, that are available, it shows those. Um, and it, it also shows other systems that are on the same network, right? So this is the resource panel. I can use this to search for cameras and search for videos. A lot of different things later you can get into into other training videos, but I'm not going to go into it now. The top bar is a navigation bar. It has screen recording. It has the connect to system. So if you're connected to an existing system, you want to connect to a new system, you can click that. Right. Uh, the upper right shows notifications. Email address is not set. I haven't put my email address into the system yet. It let me know. Right. And then at the bottom, when I pull a camera in here, let's just pull in one of these detected cameras, and you can see there's a timeline. Right. Um, so that's me. This is a, one of my office cameras. Let me zoom out. So this is an office cam and obviously a PTZ camera. So I can start to control PTZ camera. Right? If I want to look at my door to my office, I can point the camera at the door to my office. Right? So I've got five cameras that my system has auto-detected. Right? One is an Axis M1014. Looks like it's in our testing environment. Um, another, and then I have three that are locked. And then I have this PTZ camera I'm looking at right now. The three that are locked, um, if you have that kind of symbol, what that means is that the username and the password that lets you control the camera has not been input in, into our system. It's either not been input or it's input incorrectly, right? NX Witness holds a lot of default username and passwords for um, various camera manufacturers, um, but um, not all of them. So if we look at these three cameras here and we pull them out, what you'll see is that they're unauthorized. And what that means is I can't see the video stream coming from because I haven't logged into the camera, right? So uh, what I can do is I can go to camera settings and underneath authentication, I can add in the authentication information. Now, if all the cameras are the same manufacturer and they all have the same default username and password, then what I can do is um, I can just close all these real fast. I can highlight all three cameras here, right? And you'll see that now I can change uh, settings across all cameras. I can put in admin and put in the password and then I can press apply, right? So there you go. Um, in a few seconds, it takes a little while to update the cameras and log in obviously, um, but now I should start to see live streams coming from them. So there you go, they're all online now. If I pull them in, I got four cameras in the office. I can adjust my um, resolution, or sorry, my spacing on my, my uh, grid UI is what we call it. Um, I can rearrange them to look exactly how I want it to look. So if I stretch this one out here, and I play these like this, I want one more. So I've just created a view, right? Not a, not, a, not a pretty one, but a view anyways. So I'm going to switch that out. So this is my fisheye camera, right? So the first thing, after I've installed my system, I want to set up uh, recording, right? I get four free trial licenses. And the way that you activate the trial license is you go to system administration and you go to licenses. And you can see here that I've already activated my trial license. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that out of my system because it's confusing. I've got some old licenses here from uh, when I was uh, doing demos earlier on this machine, right? Um, so I'm going to remove all these. If I have no licenses, I can click on this activate trial license. You can only use it for 30 days, right? So 
there you go i've successfully activated my trial license but you can see that i used it last november of last year so it's expired right but that's the license for this machine licensing and nx witness is controlled by server basis right so when you activate a license we look at your hardware configuration and we create we generate a uh, hardware ID which is tied to your licenses just so you guys know so I can't activate any recording licenses right now no big deal I know what it looks like when you record but um, you guys when you press that button as long as you have an active internet connection you'll get four free licenses for 30 days if you want more contact us at support.networkoptics.com tell us how many you need tell us how long you'd like to try it for we're more than happy to give you guys trial licenses if you want to try it out and replace another system you have uh, before you place another system that you have so that's uh, how you activate licenses um, to, to set up camera recording right or to configure cameras specifically um, there's there's a couple different you go to the camera settings page right um, underneath recording uh, you want to enable recording. You can see I've got zero licenses, but I can still draw on this and show you how it works. So for recording, I've got different options. I can set the frame rate of the camera. I can set the quality, uh, low, medium, high, or best. Um, what that does is adjust your bit rate on the camera coming in so you can see. Uh, so you can adjust for like, oh, I want uh, better bandwidth usage, but a uh, decent image. I don't need a full image for this thing, right? Or I want the highest possible image, but lower frame rate totally up to you guys right but I can record always I can do motion based recording I can do motion based recording plus low resolution stream always and I can do not do not record some other things I can do is adjust the motion recording pre-recording and post recording um, I can set a minimum number of days to keep this cameras recording or I can set a maximum number of days which is important for some markets where it's a legal uh, requirement that you that you don't keep video for more than 30 days right so that's what I can do to set up this camera if I set it up if I if I just drag and drop I can even mix and match you know I want motion between 8 and 9 in the morning and 6 and 7 in the evening and every everything else I want uh, and, and during non working hours I want uh, motion plus low res but during working hours I want to record everything right well that's a way to do it um, so this is how you set up your your recording like I said, you get four free licenses. Um, one other quick thing I'll show you just because it's right in my face right now is uh, fisheye. So this camera right behind me is a fisheye camera. So I need to say this is a fisheye lens camera. Now, when I do that, um, I need to go into fisheye settings here and calibrate the camera. So I always use auto calibration. We will automatically detect the edges of that fisheye lens. Uh, you can see we came right to it. Um, this is a ceiling mount. You can do wall mount, you can do floor table mount. Either way, press apply when you're done, All right? It won't save my recording, but it'll save my, um, my fisheye stuff. So good to go. So you can see here I'm in de-warp mode. If I go to de-warp mode, then I can start to use the fisheye camera like a BDZ. So I've got one camera that covers my entire office. Pretty cool. I can go to 180, do the same thing, or I can even see a 360 view of my office, right? So pretty cool, unique feature, but I thought I'd show you that real fast because uh, you guys are here. So anyways, that's how you set up and uh, start to try your NX Witness uh, free trial system. If you guys got any questions, go to support.networkoptics.com. Feel free to ask away. Good luck, guys.